It's Friday, and these are the top 25 teams in college basketball. If you would like lengthier content, I can stream if y'all would like. I can talk sports all day. Comment if you would enjoy that. Without further ado, let's get into it. They've been in my rankings all year and will continue to do so. They're coming off a loss to Auburn, which is really bad. Kelloware is still strong, and Glaco is good enough to help them be in my top 25. Up next is the team that beat them, Auburn. Aiden Holloway has been playing very well as a starter, while Broom has arguably been their most impactful player. Auburn has depth and will get you in those minutes. Oklahoma makes my rankings for the first time all year. They're 9-0, but don't have any impressive wins, even though they beat Arkansas, who has an awful coach, by the way. Musselman is irritating. Clemson is another 9-0 team entering my rankings for the first time all year. They've been on the rise for years and beat TCU in a game that was tied at half. Leaving Toronto with a W is impressive. Virginia is yet another team entering my top 25 for the first time all season. I've been a fan of Reese since day one, and Virginia was my first team out in the preseason. Buchanan is another freshman I think could be drafted. Before I go any further, honorable mentions to Miami. I think Wigga Poplar is among the most overrated players, but Miami shoots really good most games. Utah I almost included, but rivalry games just bring out the best in them. Cincinnati has been in my rankings before, but they're like a light version of Miami. Alabama and Ohio State were also on the border, but OSU lost to Penn State. Emmanuel Miller and TCU lost their first game to Clemson. South Carolina would also be undefeated if they weren't for the Tigers. And the first team out is Iowa State, as they're back on a winning streak looking great. Texas A&M is a team nobody's going to have in their top 25. They lost to Memphis this last weekend, which isn't a shocker. They were under 20% from three, but were never that much of a shooting team anyways. Just a disappointing game. Coleman and Taylor still my top 10 duos. Memphis was just simply better than Texas A&M. Even though the Hardaway duo didn't score, they played great defense, showing what this Memphis team is about. David Jones scored 29 and is one of the leading scorers in college basketball this year. They always play good in big games. Ahead of Memphis is the team who beat them a couple of weeks ago. We'll see how long Ole Miss remains undefeated. They barely get UCF and that game was crazy. The Golden Knight defender got a steal on the last play and missed a game tying dunk. Alex Flanagan has been showing up big time in these wins. FAU. This feels low for the Owls. Martin and Golden are so good. The whole team shoots well, and Golden specifically leads Division 1 in field goal percentage, I believe. This is a very solid group of experienced players. Illinois. Domask and Shannon are carrying, like I've said, every single college basketball video this year. The game last week against Tennessee didn't go as well as they would have liked it to go, but Domask, he went 2 for 11. Like, can you believe that? BYU is no longer undefeated, but I don't think that changes much. Jackson Robinson is one of the better seniors in college basketball, and he's coming off the bench, which is fun because the Cougars are just one of those teams that you'd like to watch. Gonzaga, despite losing to Washington, Gonzaga is still a great team in my opinion. Adam Watson just doesn't shoot well as he has been, but Graham Mike and Ryan M. Hart are filling roles to perfection. Colorado, it's probably wrong to have Colorado up here with two bad losses, but the duo of Cody Williams and Tristan De Silver will be so lethal when Cody comes back. They still beat Miami without him, and Tristan has been underrated all year. Yeah, Duke has struggled this year, but their offense relies more on individual abilities than teamwork, which is nothing new for Duke. They have the stars, but are susceptible to upsets more. Can we talk about Cal Filipowski last game? 28 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. Tyrese Proctor is hurt, but Duke's still a team of killers, not the Alabama kind. Texas. Yeah, they got blown out by Marquette, but Texas is still settling into this new season. Max Amos has been looking better each week, and Dylan Mitchell has been doing a lot of dirty work. While Hunter and the rest of the team have underperformed, the team still has the shape of a Final Four team. Houston. LJ Cryer has been a blessing. Emmanuel Sharp just had his best game. Roberts has been a dog. Terrence Arsenault just had 10 rebounds in the game. Defense is as stable as ever, and they win the free throw battle to each game. Tennessee has played so good in their hard schedule. Connect has scored a ton of points, of course, but their defense is among the best. They don't have a lot of size on paper, but are so physical, reminding me of Villanova these past few seasons. Baylor hasn't played in over a week, but they've exceeded expectations this year. They're not in no, and Jacoby Walter is a star. Mans is the whole package, better than Davion Mitchell was, and their no middle defense is holding up. Marquette only beat St. Thomas by five, but they have so many good wins already on the resume, and they're 9-2, and so it's hard to put them lower. Ozo Hodaro has been a dog, while not 
exactly consistent. Tyler Kolek and Sam and Cam Jones are there too, so they can outscore the other team anyways. Kentucky, Aaron Bradshaw is back. I don't know if he'll be their starting center this year, but he just got a double double in their win against Penn. Their eight man rotation is like the Avengers. They're all great athletes. Bradshaw works well with senior Mitchell and DJ Wagner. The Kentucky Wildcats are closer to final form now. In front of Kentucky is the team they play tomorrow, the UNC Tar Heels. I don't know how anyone can look at UNC and not think they're an elite team. Scoring hasn't been a problem for them this season. Elliot Cadeau is starting now like I've been calling for since the beginning of the year, and their offense with Ingram and Davis is a thing of beauty. Baycott's been a great rebounder too. UConn. Everything comes easy for the Huskies. Carabin has been playing well. Klingon has been a GOAT on defense, and Stefan Castle is back. You know what that means. Guard depth is insane with him. Newton and Spencer, and that front court duo is very good defensively. Kansas. The Jayhawks have been on a roll as we expected. They've beaten every rival. Dickinson has been real big, literally, getting double-doubles like nothing. McCullough is still playing like Kevin Knox. Adams has been good on both sides of the ball. Jackson's jab stock has taken a hit, though. Purdue. I was real concerned about the Boilermakers, but they held off against Alabama. Zach Eady has dominated every game, and no one has stopped him this year. This is by far the most consistent he's been, and Brandon Smith has been his sidekick. I shouted him out a few videos ago. He's got great ball control. Number one team is the team who has played flawless, Arizona. They blew out Wisconsin for everybody to watch and are the consistent number one team. From the beginning of the year, the entire starting lineup has scored in double figures like every game. Each one of them. They get a ton of assists, have Ballo for size, and he's been incredible. And love Boswell Johnson Larson. Like, this may be one of the best starting lineups in college basketball history. That's the bottom line. Thank you for watching. See you next week.